Have you found yourself working for a really toxic boss? Is it eroding your self-esteem and starting to take a toll on your physical or your mental health? Hi, I'm Dr. Leanne Davey and I empathize. I have been there and it's a really hard situation. I wanted to share with you a few things, generic advice about what you can do anytime you have a particularly toxic boss. In the comments, I've got lots of different advice for specific kinds of bosses, like an insecure boss or a boss playing favorites. But here I wanna give you some advice that holds for any type of situation, which is really about protecting you. So first, I want you to think about your, um, your approaches in sort of concentric circles. So first is things you can do yourself. Next is things you can do with your teammates and then starting to broaden beyond there to your social supports, to other people in your business network. So when it comes to you, I think the first thing I want you to do is think about, am I overreacting? I know that's not what you feel like doing in this moment. You feel that you are fully justified in thinking you have the worst boss ever. And it is worth just saying, okay, are there other ways to interpret what my boss did? Uh, if I put it in the grand scheme of things, are there you know, people who could be much, much worse? Um, and get a sense of whether you're kind of blowing it out of proportion. Is it something that hurts and, and because you feel a little bruised, you're taking this to, to mean that your boss hates you when maybe it's just they were correcting a particular piece of work. If there's somebody that you trust, share. If your boss sent an email that you think is really horrible, share it with somebody, get their take on it. Just do a bit of a check first. The next thing you can do is to take your boss's probably very subjective, nasty, judgmental criticisms of you and try and shrink them down so that they have less of an effect on your self-esteem by making them really more objective and less subjective. So for example, if your boss has said to you, your work is so sloppy and you're always you know, missing the details, something you know, really big, which could reflect on, you know, maybe I'm not built for this, think about objectively what they're reacting to. If there were two typos in a document, it's much better to reframe your thinking to, I left two typos in a document than I'm sloppy. So trying to contain uh, your boss's criticisms or the ways that they're toxic um, so that they're more um, bounded, <laughs> they, they won't have as big an effect on you. When you've dealt with it yourself, when you've processed it a little bit, then there's the opportunity to think about how do I use my team? So if your boss is toxic in the sense that they you know, set the team up for failure or they create infighting among the team, then try and get a conversation going with your teammates to say, how are we gonna cope with this? So for example, if the boss is assigning the same work to multiple people, okay, when you get an assignment, let's huddle up and make sure we know who's doing what to whom for whom. Um, you can overcome that. If the boss is really scatterbrained, you can bring your own agenda or your own structure. So the next thing with a toxic boss is to see how can we rally the teammates, or at least the ones that are on side, to try and have that make less of an impact. And your team isn't only useful for kind of getting that productivity support, it's also very helpful to get the social support from the team. So can we just go for a walk and have a quick coffee? I need a break from my afternoon, those sorts of supports. So that's you and then the team. The other really important thing when you have a toxic boss is to, to have more of your interactions and more support coming from outside of the team. So are there other people in the organization who uh, you have strong relationships with, previous managers, a mentor, somebody who works in a different department, just so you can get a breath of fresh air from your team. Um, talk about what you're working on, have somebody who's also excited, those sorts of things can be important. And as you strengthen the connection with them, you also reduce the likelihood that your toxic boss could end your career in this company. It gives you some new um, connections and paths out, which can be really useful as well. Another thing that you want to do is beef up the support of just people in your friend group or in your community. Where are the places where you can get away from thinking about work altogether and go do things that give you joy, that are fun. Um, for me, it's usually in a dance studio where I can't worry about anything when I'm trying to tap dance um, other than not falling on my butt. 
So building that is really, really important. And everything around working on your resilience. So what helps with your resilience? Is it you know getting in some kind of a soccer game that blows off some steam, going for a run? Is it having some quiet time to, to do, you know, to paint or do something that allows you time in your head? Is it that you recover by, you know, making order at least in some little place that putting nice labels on your jars in your pantry would make you feel better? Resilience is super important. So if you have a toxic boss, I want you to think about it as what do I need to do myself? What can I do with my teammates? And then how can I expand to build my network out into the organization, but also out into my community so I have more supports? All of those things will really help you get through a situation with a toxic boss. And hopefully it's not a situation that lasts for too long. All right, I'm Dr. Leanne Davey, here to help you get the team you deserve.